So, dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present uh, at the EBC 2021 meeting. Uh, my name is uh, Pietro La Forgia. I work uh, as an interventional cardiology fellow at the Institute Cardiovascular Paris Sud MSC in France. And the title of my presentation is To Pot or Not To Pot Data from the ABC Main. So, I don't need to go too long on this topic. Why pot? Because uh, here uh, the audience, I think, is uh, everybody is aware of why we have to perform pot proximal optimization technique, basically for three reasons. First reason is to optimize uh, stent expansion and uh, position in the proximal main branch. Second reason is to avoid carina shift and reduce the obstruction of the side branch by pushing aside the um, struts of the stent implanted towards the distal main branch and then to facilitate rewiring the same branch, avoiding uh, uh, rewiring behind the uh, struts for the same region. And not only is it important to perform POT, but it is important to perform a good POT, correct POT, an adequate POT, and the uh, 15th uh, EBC consensus bifurcation showed us how to perform um, the correct POT with a short non-compliant balloon uh, with the edge of the balloon which has to be perfectly positioned and the proximal immediately proximal to the carina reaching the proximal stent edge in order to avoid carina shift if the balloon is too distal or incomplete expansion uh, towards the side branch ostium if the balloon is too uh, proximal and the ebc main was a randomized trial recently published on the european Health journal 2021 um, which uh, randomized 467 patients with the true left main bifurcation lesions, those uh, Medina 111 or 011, to a stepwise provisional strategy versus a two stent strategy up front. And uh, we all know the result of this uh, very important trial. Uh, no difference in the primary endpoint, which was a composite of uh, death, MI, or target lesion revascularization, were found at 12 months between the patients uh, randomized to provisional stepwise strategy or dual stent upfront strategy. And we also have to underline that uh, side brain stenting was performed only in uh, one fifth of patients, actually 22% of patients in provisional. Uh, what we um, were interested to see is, uh, was to see if POT had some impact on the outcome of these patients. Actually, POT, proximal optimization technique, was mandatory by protocol in the ABC main, but actually uh, from the data we received from uh, the multiple centers who were involved, probably because of operator uh, preference, around 15% 15 of patients did not undergo POT. And what we looked for in this uh, sub-analysis, which I'm going to show the result uh, in a while, was to see uh, with a core lab reanalysis of procedure if an adequate POT was performed and patients in, included. And actually, by relooking at angels and the procedures, uh, adequate POT with the characteristic uh, we uh, described a few slides uh, before uh, was not performed in around 12% of patients, actually, 11.8% of patients uh, from both groups. What was interesting to see, very striking to see, is this uh, Kaplan-Meier curve that shows that the outcome of patients who did not undergo correct POT uh, was extremely worse than patients uh, who uh, underwent correct POT. Actually, the events were doubled in patients uh, uh, who did not undergo uh, correct POT with a composite uh, endpoint that we described earlier at 12 months. And this was uh, maintained uh, in both groups this couple of Meyer of the patients uh, who underwent uh, a randomization to stepwise provisional strategy, uh, although non statistically non significant, was a big numerical difference which was appearing through time, but the statistical uh, significance was maintained in the dual stent strategy uh, group. Uh, what we checked uh, also was uh, to see if POT had any impact on the procedure. Actually, no uh, increase of procedural time, fluoroscopy time, or uh, the amount of contrast uh, administered to the patients were found in patients with POT or without POT. And this was uh, no difference in the, in the provisional group. 
and no difference with what find um, were found uh, rather um, patients who underwent a second stent in the provisional uh, group. Uh, moreover, what we checked was uh, the QCA analysis, which was performed by Core Lab again, by the independent Core Lab. And what is uh, interesting to find, but probably expected, was that the difference was uh, a statistically significant difference was found in means of the minimal diameter of the proximal main branch in patients who underwent POT or not, though no differences were found in the minimal diameter in the distal main branch or the side branch. This was quite uh, expected, but still could explain uh, at least partially the reason why so much more events were found. So to conclude, we have to say that POT is a fundamental step in the treatment of true bifurcation lesions, especially when a dual stent approach is performed. And the striking difference was found in uh, terms of events at 12 months follow-up in patients of the ABC main uh, uh, trial. And it is a fundamental step and also does not increase procedural time or contrast media administered. So we, again, underline the importance of performing this crucial step of bifurcation stenting. And probably uh, the reason why we had so much reduction of maize at one year is that POT uh, allows good expansion, and good opposition of the stent in the proximal main branch, and in this case, clearly, the left main. Thank you for the attention and uh, looking forward to any questions uh, if you have it.